you've had a long history with different administrations. You remember President Obama didn't, didn't, was not a fan of, of this move. I don't know if you remember that great quote. He said it's a gimmick, and I don't think people need to get a free, uh, a free half gallon of gas is not going to solve what, what we're trying to do. Did you agree with him back then? And have you changed your view, or, or is it different this time around? Look, this is a different economic situation. Right now, we are coming out of a global pandemic, or at least we hope we're coming out of it. We have Russia's war on Ukraine. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. We have record inflation. And so this president, while very proud of the growth and in our economy last year and the strength of our labor market, also very much understands the cost of inflation for American families. Uh, we know that a lot of the inflation has been caused over the last several months by Putin's invasion of Ukraine because that has generated increases in our energy prices. And so President Biden is looking at all tools available to try to help it make it a little bit easier for people at the pump. It's why he has uh, done historic releases from our strategic petroleum reserve, has relaxed some regulations on biofuels, and he's looking at other uh, options on the table as well, including a gas tax holiday. Uh, I'm gonna, Tom's going to come in here, uh, Chair Rouse. And we had the, sort of the same idea. You, we're goosing demand and not increasing supply. That, that seems like that's not the way to, is that? That's exactly, that's exactly what I was going to ask is, uh, uh, is, on the one hand, we're, we're doing our best to increase demand. Uh, on the other hand, if you step back with a, with, a, with a long lens, the Biden administration has enacted sweeping regulations to reduce supply. So we're increasing demand, we're reducing supply. What is that going to do to prices in the long so run? Actually, so oil production is actually up, and there's been more oil produced in the president's first year in office than in two years of Trump. So oil production is up. Oil companies have the incentive to increase production. He has signaled that he it wants to work with them to help them increase production. He's encouraging them to use uh, the, the 9,000 permits that they're not using. Uh, Se Secretary Granholm will be meeting with refiners tomorrow. Uh, so he is looking to increase production in, in any and all ways he can. It's why he welcomed the decision by OPEC Plus to increase uh, oil production. So, yes, he needs to get oil um, on the market. He very much understands that. But he also understands that families are facing uh, uh, high prices at the pump, and he wants to give them a little bit more breathing room. Look, we all understand that oil is priced on a global market, uh, but he's looking to do what he can to make things a little bit easier for the American consumer. Uh, Chair Rouse, I, uh, I must be living in the past. I'm going to go back to another uh, 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 Obama appointee. I'm talking about Larry Summers. and, and just. I wonder if you could weigh in on whether you think the, the possibility or probability of a recession is, is increasing. And, and he admits maybe we don't, but he certainly is worried about a, a hard landing. Piece today in the Wall Street Journal that 44% that of economists are, are, are now thinking we could have a recession by the end of uh, 2023. Um, you're a, a trained economist. I think you went about as far as you can go in, 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 in the dismal science uh, at, at Harvard. Do you see signs that, that could indicate that, that a recession is, is imminent or likely to occur? Well, we all certainly hope that the Fed can uh, get inflation under control without uh, seeding too much on maximum employment. We all hope for the, uh, you know, longed for soft landing. What I can say is this, is we had one quarter of negative GDP growth that was largely caused by uh, exports uh, being um, uh, weaker than imports um, and some, uh, some other weak indicators. But if you looked at the core parts of um, the GDP last quarter, they were actually rather strong in terms of consumer spending. If you look at the labor market, it remained strong. We continue to get record uh, low unemployment claims. So when the National Bureau of Economic Research looks back and actually dates the recession, it looks at more than just GDP growth. It looks at consumer uh, personal income. And we know the balance sheets remain healthy for, uh, for, for now. Again, this is all due to the fact that last year we had record growth uh, and uh, it, you know fast employment growth, historic drop in unemployment, so that the bones of our economy are strong. We are best positioned to go into these challenges than uh, most other nations. And so when we look at recession, we're obviously watching. That's obviously a concern. But the bones of our economy remain solid, so we have the headwind to face these challenges.